Hey calculus class, today we are going to learn topic 28, linear approximation. So I first want you to think about the following. If you were to zoom in really, really close to a point on a curve, what do you think the curve will eventually become? You should have thought a line because we say that the curve is approaching the tangent line. So if we were to look at this, here we have a curve and we have the tangent line. And if we were to zoom in really close around the point of tangency, you would see that the curve is the same as the tangent line. So this allows us to use the tangent line to approximate y values on the curve with x values really close to the, tan to the tangent point. So equation of the tangent line, we know that the point slope form of the tangent line to the curve of y equals f of x at the point a comma f of a is y minus f of a equals f prime of a, the slope of the tangent line, times x minus a. We can also write it as y equals f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. So linear approximation of f at a point. The linear approximation or tangent line approximation of f at a is given by f of x is approximate l of x, so this means the linear approximation, equal to f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. This is also called the, linear, the linearization of f at a. So if you wanted to look at this, so just picture, pretend that this x value is very, very close to the a value. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to use the point on the tangent line, this y value, we are going to say is approximately the same as the y value on the curve at that x value. So we find that the y value at this point and say that it is the approximated y value on the curve at the same x value. And this is our approximated y value. So let's look at an example. We want to find the linearization of f of x equals the square root of 1 plus x at x equals 0. Then use it to approximate the square root of 1.02 and square root of 0.94. <clears throat> so the first step is to find the linearization at the given x value, which means find the equation of the tangent line. So I first have to find the y value at x equals 0, which is 1. Then I have to find the derivative, and I had to use the chain rule. Then I need to find the value of the slope of the tangent line at x equals 0, which gives me 1 half. And then I can write my equation of my tangent line. <clears throat> Step 2 says now to determine the x value at which you want to approximate it. So if we're looking at the square root of 1.02, if we were to rewrite this so it, was, so it was in the form of my function, square root of 1 plus x, that means the x value I had to put in was 0 0.02. So <clears throat> that gives me an x value that I am going to plug in to my equation of my tangent line. Notice how this x value is fairly close to my point of tangency, x equals 0. And I'm going to do the same idea with the square root of 0.94. So if I was to rewrite it in form of this function, that means my x value would be negative 0.06, also an x value fairly close to my point of tangency, x equals 0. <clears throat> now step 3 plug in the x values in the, into the equation of the tangent line. So here's my equation of my tangent line. I'm going to plug in 0 0.02 to get 1.01. Uh, .01. Then I'm going to plug in negative 0 0.06 to get 0.97. Now if you have a calculator, you can check to see if the linear approximation is fairly close to the actual value. And so if we were to plug in the square root of 1.02 into our calculator, 
we would get the following, which is pretty dang close to our approximated value on the tangent line. And the same thing with the square root of 0.94. We get another value fairly close to the value on the tangent line that we are saying is approximately our y value on the curve. All right, <clears throat> let's say we want to approximate the value of the fourth root of 78. We need to choose a parent function and an x value in which you can evaluate and is near the x value you want to approximate at. So I'm gonna say that my, um, <clears throat> my parent function is the fourth root of x and, I can, and an x value that I can take the fourth root of is 81. So I'm gonna say x equals 81. So that means I can find the value of my function at x equals 81, which is three. Find my derivative of my function. Find the slope of the tangent line at the x value of 81, which will give me one, one over 108. Write my equation of my tangent line. And I'm going to plug in the x value that I'm approximating, which is 78. And once I simplify that, I get the following. And if I wanted to, I can take with my calculator the fourth root of 78, and I should get a value fairly close to 2.9722, which I do. All right, let's try this one. <clears throat> if f is a differentiable function and f of five equals 10 and f prime of five equals negative two, what is the approximate value of f of 5.5? So I can write my equation of my tangent line because I have my value or my point of tangency, which is five comma 10, and I have the slope of my tangent line, which is negative two. So since I want to approximate at 5.5, I plug in 5.5 for x and I get nine. This is a very typical AP style question that assesses you on linear approximation. All right, I want you to see if you can do this one all by yourself. All right, let's see how you did. Should have written your equation of your tangent line at the point negative seven comma 15. Your slope of your tangent line is four. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in negative 6.8. Simplify to get 15.8. All right, <clears throat> with linear approximation, we get differentials, differentials. And let me just start by saying that differentials are basically the exact same thing that we just did, just written in a different format. <clears throat> and they can kind of be a little confusing. So <clears throat> we're gonna let y equal f of x be a differentiable function and dy dx equal f prime. <clears throat> Then we can rewrite dy dx equals f prime as dy equals f prime of x dx. So I just multiplied both sides by dx. The differential of x dx is an independent variable and can be any real number. Frequently, dx is set equal to the change of x, which is the change of x. The differential of y, dy, is defined by dy equals f prime of x dx, which represents an approximation of the actual change of y for a small change of x. In other words, the amount that the tangent line rises and falls, which is the change in the linearization. <clears throat> so if we were to look at this graphically, <clears throat> we have our point of tangency and we approximate at some x value with a, away from x, and we usually say that that distance is our change of x. And in this terminology of differentials, we're letting our change of x equal dx. And then the distance <clears throat> from our point of tangency to the point on our actual curve that we are pro that we're approximating at is represented by the change in the y values. And this is what we let be delta y. 
Now the dy, and this is the part that gets confusing, is that the delta y does not equal the dy. The dy represents the change in which the tangent line is rising from the point of tangency to the point on the tangent line that I'm using for my approximation. So as this point moves closer to the point of tangency, the change of x gets closer to zero. That's when we can say that dy approximates uh, the change of y, because this distance becomes closer and closer to each other as d this point on the tangent line moves closer to your point of tangency. <clears throat> so we want to find the differential of the function and evaluate it at the given x value and dx. Then sketch the graph with the label differentials and the change in y. So we're going to look at y equals cosine x, specifically at x equals pi over 3, with a dx of 0.05. So first thing, I'm going to find my derivative. <clears throat> and I'm going to find my dy, so I'm just multiplying both sides by dx. Then I'm going to find the value of my dy, given that the x value is pi over 3, and my dx value is 0.05. So <clears throat> the sine of pi over 3 gives me square root 3 over 2. Do some simplifying to get a dy of negative 0.0433. So if I was to look at this as a picture, <clears throat> here's my point of tangency. And the change from the x value of pi over 3 to the x value that I'm approximating at is 0 0.05. So I'm labeling that change. Then this change right here, that is your dy. So since this time the tangent line is falling, that's why we have a negative dy. And this distance right here is represented by my change of y, <clears throat> which is the value on the original curve, cosine, at the x value um, plus my change in y, or the change in x, which gives me that new x value, minus cosine of pi over 3. And I get negative 0.43908. So they are fairly close to each other. So they should be fairly close to each other. And of course, if I was to pick a point on the tangent line closer, which means my change of x is smaller, <clears throat> these values will become similar. All right, differentials and the linear approximation. So using the notation of differentials, the linear approximation, which we currently have, can be written as the following, f of a plus dx is approximately to f of a plus f prime of a dx, which equals f of a plus dy. So this x minus a is our change of x, so there's the dx. <clears throat> this f of a is just the value on your original function at the original x value. And this a plus dx is the x value that you are approximating at that's fairly close to a. And since earlier we said that dy is represented by the derivative times dx, that's why you can replace f prime of a dx with dy. So an example, <clears throat> we're going to use differentials to approximate the natural log of 1.07. So my parent function is the natural log of x. And the x value that I'm looking at for a point of tangency is 1. So that means my dx, or my change of x, is going to be 0 0.07. So my dy is going to be the derivative times dx. And my derivative of um, x equals 1 <clears throat> gives me dy equals dx. So when I substitute this in, I'm going to approximate f of 1 plus 0 0.07, which is the same thing as 1.07, is approximately f of 1 plus the derivative of 1 times dx, or in other words, f of 1 plus dy. Well, <clears throat> f of 1 is 0 because the natural log of 1 is 0, plus 
my dy, and here, after simplifying, my dy equals dx. So that means I have 0 plus 0 0.07. So what this says is that if I was to take the natural log of 1.07, I should get something fairly close to 0 0.07. And I do. I actually get 0 0.0677. If you can't remember all of this, you can just use linear approximation. It is the exact same thing, but with different notation. All right, now this leads into, since we're approximating, we're gonna have errors. So if we are making physical measurements, there is always error involved. The error is notated by using the delta symbol, followed by the variable representing the quantity measured. For example, if we are measuring volume, the error in measuring the volume would be symbolized by delta V. Graphically, the error is the distance between the point on the curve and the point on the tangent line. But since we say that dy is approximately the change of y, then we say that the error is dy. So coming back to this picture right here. What we're saying the error is, say that the error is this distance from the point on my tangent line to the point that I'm approximating at. So absolute, relative, and percent error. The actual error from the true value is called the absolute error. It can also be called the propagated error. And this is given by the absolute value of the change of y minus dy, which we are saying is approximately the change of y. The relative error is the absolute error divided by total quantity. This is the actual value on the curve. So the change in y over y or dy over y. The percentage error is the relative error multiplied by 100. All right, so let's look at an example. The radius of a circular disc is given as 24 centimeters with a maximum error in measurement of 0.2 centimeters. Estimate the maximum error in the calculated area of the disc. What is the relative and percentage error? So we have the area of a circular disc, which is pi r squared. We have a radius of 24. And we have the error which is dr, since we're dealing with the radius, as 0.2. So when I take the derivative of the area formula and find the dA, I get 2 pi r dr. Well, I can find dA by plugging in a radius of 24 and an error of the radius as 0.2, or the change in the radius as 0.2, to get 30.1593. So the max error in the area equals delta A, which in this case is my 30.1593. To get the relative error, I'm gonna take my delta, my change in um, area over the actual area, which means DA over A. So when I do that, well my DA was two pi r dr over my area, which is pi r squared. So that cancels the pi and one of the r's to give me two dr over r. Now I can plug in what I have. Well, I have the dr to be 0.2 and the radius to be 24. And after simplifying, I get a relative error of 0 0.016 repeating. So that means my percentage error is 1.6 repeating percent, right? I hope you enjoyed learning about linear approximation, and I will see you in class tomorrow. Have a good night.